Hey, hey, y'all. So it's me, Tessa from Gemini's Corner, your favorite tarot reader. Coming to give you some energy for today. So you know what to do. Go ahead and like the video, subscribe to the channel. Click the notification bell so you'll know when a new video comes out. For all your coffee and glam needs, visit www.theglamcafe.com. If you like a personal reading, my information is in the description box. And let's get into this. So y'all, don't judge my nails. I need something. I hate getting my nails done. I don't know why I did this. I really need just need to stick the press-ons. But um, I've been so busy between personals and everything else that I got going on. I haven't had time. So <clears throat> I got one of our new decks in. This is a career and finances deck. So we're going to pull a few from these. And I've been actually shuffling with them since I got them to get my energy on them. So we're going to get a few of these and then get um, some of the regular cards. Bottom of the deck, Eight of Swords. Magician, which is Gemini energy. Double Gemini energy coming out here. Mm. Okay. I ain't too much liking this. Okay, so we're going to take that. So that's Libra, Gemini, Gemini. Virgo energy also. I'm going to take this. Not really liking that. <clears throat> There's a card already. Turn over. What is this? Mm. Mm. Oh, okay, Gemini. What else? You know what? I already see what this is. So that's just kind of classic Gemini. You know, they always talk about the good and the bad characteristics of any sign. And to me, what I'm seeing right now is classic Gemini where there's mental conflict always going on, always happening. There's mental um, <clears throat> or overthinking happening, okay? The thinking woman is out here. Mental conflict, that's overthinking. And I feel like this has been something that has been a long time. This has, hap has been happening for you for a long time. You have felt there are some decisions here that need to be made. Two and two with the two of swords here Two. there's a decision that needs to be made. And I feel like the decision that needs to be made also, um, this may be about you relocating somewhere. Okay. The decision that needs to be made, but also I feel like the, the decision that needs to be made is whether you're going to manifest whatever it is that you're trying to manifest or not. I feel like, see, see, to me, when I look at this, this gives me, this shows me that you're wavering in whatever manifestation you're trying to bring into full fruition. So for example, if you're trying to manifest money, let's just say you've been manifesting for a hundred thousand dollars in your account. Okay. I have a hundred thousand dollars in my bank account. I'm so happy that I have a hundred thousand dollars in my bank account. You may say that all day, one day, and then the next day you're like, it's not here yet. But how do you say that? Or I haven't seen any movement yet, but which are also affirmations, by the way, because an affirmation is nothing but a thought. And so how do you spend all that time affirming for something just to go back and say, well, I don't see any movement or I don't have the money yet. Yes, you do, because you were just affirming all day yesterday that you have a hundred thousand dollars in your bank account. So. That's what I mean, double-mindedness, double-mindedness. There's a lot of doubles here, two, 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 double-mindedness. And for those who resonate with the Bible, the Bible said that double-minded people should expect nothing from the Lord. To me, I translate that or I 
um, when I think about that, that verse, the universe, uh, the Lord could be the universe or an actual deity, whatever you believe. But basically it's saying you cannot expect to bring forth something if you're double minded, if you're of two minds. So how are you manifesting Gemini energy? But you go against your manifestation. You could be manifesting, manifesting a person. That this person loves you, that this person's committed to you, that this person wants you and only you. Hell, that this person contacts you. Okay, whatever it is. Um, but how are you manifesting this when you go against what you're saying, whatever the new story is or whatever the affirmation is? So this is clear to me <clears throat> um what's happening. And it it won't get you anywhere. It'll keep you stagnant, it'll keep you blocked, it'll keep you feeling like your manifestation is blocked or you may feel like something is uh, trying to stop you and it's you. It, it's nothing. Okay. It, it, it's definitely you. So eight of swords and this is a and this is the career deck. So eight of swords, mental prison, feeling restricted, block at every turn. So you feel like you can't get free from something, even though the key is right there. If you just stretch your arm out, if you just sh stretch out your mind a little, <laughs> If you just stretch your patience, you could be free. So I feel like whatever it is that you're trying to manifest for, it's actually right within reach. Okay. But because you're overthinking and overthinking in the wrong way, it, I mean, my thing is if you're going to overthink, at least, at least overthink in something that is beneficial to you. Okay. I say that all the time. The magician. Law of attraction, materializing wealth, desires within reach. I just said that. I feel like it's in reach. You can look at this picture and see if this person just stretches out their hand, you know, they would have the key. So whatever you're manifesting is within reach. And I get a sense that it is money for some of you guys, but it's within reach. But you have to stay in the new story. You have to stay in the affirmations. Deadlocked negotiations caught in the middle. Okay. I feel like you may be caught in the middle of two minds, like I said, being double minded, but also you, you could be in the middle of some kind of negotiation where it seems like nothing's moving. Okay. <clears throat> Let's see what I get from this. A lot of air energy up there. is two of swords. Way too many. <clears throat> Way too many. Mm -hmm. This is two of swords. Okay. So once again, so once again, I feel like this is something that's been going on a while. If you look at this hermit card, Virgo energy, um, that just, that reminds me of this card here, the journey card. Okay. This may be something that you've been at by yourself for a while, or you've been, um, um, uh, in seclusion over it for a while with this seven of cups in reverse Scorpio energy. Um, You may feel alone in this, whatever this is, whatever this negotiation is or whatever. The, so you may be in the midst of something where um, things haven't been going. Things haven't been going in your favor for a while. OK, this is, has been going on for a long time and you may have been feeling secluded. OK, for a while. OK, I feel like you think or you feel like you see this situation for what it is. But I feel like you need to see it for what you want it to be. Okay. I feel like you're seeing it wrong. So let's just say that you're in a court case. And by the way things are looking in the 3D to the natural eye, it looks like you're not going to win. Or it looks like things aren't going to go in your favor. Okay. That's on the 3D. Which 
it's only looking like that because that's the way you, that's your assumption of the situation. That's your natural dominant assumption of this situation. Okay. I'm telling you that you need to see it for the way that you want it to be, not for the way that you think it's going. So if this is a court situation and you're thinking that it's not going in your favor or you're not going to win, my, my, my dominant assumption, my dominant affirmation would be the stark opposite. Okay. I feel like this is something that's been weighing on you mentally for a while, but you need to see it for the way that you want it to be. Bottom of the deck. Yeah. This is something that's been going on a while. Five of, pen, uh, five of wands right behind that. So this is some kind of, this has been a struggle, whatever this is. And I feel like it's caused conflict. Okay. And it's caused fighting could be over. It could be a child situation here with this page of pentacles, but I feel like it definitely has something to do with money, whatever this negotiation is or whatever, whatever's going on here, it has something to do with money. Okay. And there's conflict over it and there's fighting over it. Okay. You have to see it for what you want it to be. This is going in my favor. I always win. I am always chosen. This could, whatever. Whatever your situation is, apply any affirmation to it. And what I mean by that is affirmations are just thoughts. It doesn't have to be anything spectacular. Your, your affirmation could be, I win this case. I win this court case. I win. This negotiation goes in my favor. Okay. What's this magician? Law of attraction. <clears throat> Materializing wealth. Desires within. Okay. King of Pentacles came out in reverse. Okay. Four of Cups. So you could be trying to, so this is the thing about this. You may have at one time had a lot of money. Okay. Or maybe even had a job <clears throat> where you made a, a lot of money. And things have not been going well in the money department as of now. But I feel like things are going to start moving with this Eight of Wands here, Sagittarius Energy. Again, once you stop the negative talk. And I feel like it's negative. It, it could be negative talk out loud. But I feel like it's more of negative self-talk. How are you manifesting wealth but talking negatively about your financial situation? That doesn't, it doesn't even make any sense. <laughs> You're wasting your time with them. You're wasting your time with the affirmations and stuff because there's what you're changing is not out here. It's not out here. It, it may, I mean, it will show up eventually. If you stay in that story, it will show up out here. But the goal is to change what's going on inside of you. That's the whole point of, of, of the affirmation to change where your mind immediately goes in terms of any situation. I am rich. I have tons of money. I have plenty of money. I can buy whatever I need or want. The point is to say those to the point to where your mind automatically goes to those affirmations when a situation arises. That's how you know when you're, to me, that's how you know um, that your subconscious has been saturated to the point to where you actually, you know what I'm saying? You've impressed your subconscious with the affirmations. Okay. I feel like you may have um, become bored with with the firming or with the manifestation because you feel like you don't see movement. But uh, once again, that's another affirmation. I would be saying I always see movement. There's all I tell y'all that all the time. There's always movement. And if you would adopt that that affirmation, I keep saying it for a reason because eventually, if you hear me say it enough, or if you say it to yourself enough. Guess what? You'll start to see movement because your mind, because you've told your mind that there's always movement. Okay. But relying on the 3d and what it looks like in order to get your affirmation to kind of gauge where you're at. That's you shouldn't be looking at that because like I said, it's not about changing the outside. It's about changing what's going on inside. Okay. So I feel like you've kind of, you maybe even have tried to give up on the money manifestation or the, or, or the money affirmations. But I feel like with this eight of wands, you're going to see some kind of movement or at the very least get some kind of communication. That's going to kind of re-motivate you or re-energize you in terms of this manifestation. What's this eight of swords? Okay. Wow. So you've been stuck. So once again, stuck in this endless loop. 
stuck in an endless loop. This is definitely about money. This is for people. This is for the people, my followers, who are trying to manifest money right now. And I feel like you're stuck in an in endless loop of going from positive to negative. Okay? I, I feel like there's a loop there where you're positive for a while or you're in the affirmation for a while. You're in the story for a while. And then when you don't see anything, then you revert back. And I feel like it's an endless loop. Mental prison. Feeling restricted. Okay? <clears throat> You've got to stay in a new story. This death card tells me that it's been over and over and over again. Okay, this is something that happens over and over with that death card in reverse. Ace of Pentacles in reverse. Okay, and Page of Wands. You may be positive for a while. You may be speaking great, uh, speaking rightly for a while or speaking your affirmations or staying in the story for a while but in the end you always end up going back to the negative and that tells me and it should tell you that you have more work to do because if you if you revert back to the negative then that's what your dominant assumption is that's what your dominant assumption is and that's what you need to work on if you constantly revert back to that then that's where your that's where your foundation is and you have to keep working on it until you change the foundation until you no longer revert back to that okay till you revert back to something else whatever you're programming your mind with because that's essentially what you're doing you're reprogramming your mind in order to see something else see something different So that's where we're at with money. So if you're trying to manifest money, a job, whatever, because that Ace of Pentacles could be a lot of things. It, uh, it could be a job. It could be a lump sum of money. Just prosperity in general or abundance in general. <clears throat> you still got more work to do, and it shows right here. It shows where your mind is at. Overthinking and overthinking in the wrong direction. Okay? In the wrong way. Let's get a few cards on this. Bottom of deck. Some of you could be dealing with depression. Hmm. Sun in reverse. Nine of Pentacles in reverse. Three of Cups in reverse. Some of y'all are trying to. Um, first of all, <clears throat> a lot of y'all are not trusting the process. Okay, full card in reverse. Aries energy. For whatever you're manifesting, you're not trusting the process. Okay. For some of you guys, it could be material wealth with this nine of pentacles in reverse Virgo energy. But for others of you, it could be a reconciliation. Okay. But I just feel like <laughs> you're just not in a happy place right now. Sun card in reverse due to mental conflict. Okay. I feel like with, with this coming out on top of the thinking woman, you've been thinking a lot about whatever this reconciliation is. Okay. With this three of cups cancer energy. But once again, <clears throat> you're thinking that it won't happen or that... Or, or, or you're thinking that you can't make it happen. First of all, I feel like a lot of y'all are watching too many different. And I say this. I, I used to say it a lot when I first started. But <laughs> overindulging, in overindulging in anything will cause confusion. Okay. If I'm telling you, if I'm telling you one thing and then you go watch another tarot channel and they tell you something else. All you're doing is confusing yourself. All you're doing is confusing yourself. If you watch different law of assumption people, because a lot of people watch me because I talk about law of assumption intertwined with tarot. Um, if you're watching a lot of different law of assumption people, you're confusing yourself. Okay. So I feel like you're in a state of confusion about what it is, whatever it is that you're trying to manifest. Okay. And it's coming out like this with this sun card in reverse Leo energy. I feel like you may even be dealing with some depression, maybe a mild form of depression, but you're not in a happy place mentally right now. And so all those unhappy thoughts that you're having, because, <clears throat> excuse me, you guys, what you're feeling is directly related to what you're thinking. If you're sad, you're having sad thoughts. 
If you're angry, you're having angry thoughts. If you're confused, you're having confusing thoughts, okay? For some of you guys, you've been maybe stressed about money or strapped when it comes for money for a while and you're trying to turn things around. But once again, <clears throat> I feel like you're not in a good place when it comes to that. Um, because of your thoughts, your dominant thoughts around money. You need to get to the core of what you really think about money and attack those. So, yes, you may be affirming for a million dollars, but if you feel like getting money is hard, if at your core you feel like getting money is hard, okay, if you feel like you have to work hard for money, if you feel like that kind of money can only come from certain uh, paths or avenues, you also need to attack those things. Money is easy for me. Money comes to me easy, effortlessly. Money comes to me, large amounts of money come to me out of the blue all the time. I don't have to work hard for, hell, I don't have to work for money. Period. If you don't want to. Okay? But you have to attack, I feel like you have to attack, it's not enough to just affirm for the million dollars, but also get to the root of what you really believe about money. That's the same thing I'd be saying about what do you really believe about love and relationships and whatever sex you're into. So if you're into men, what do you really, at your core, what do you really believe about men? <clears throat> at your core, what do you really believe about women? At your core, what do you really believe about relationships? And anything that you don't like, any belief that you don't like, attacking those with new assumptions. <clears throat> What else? Yeah, you're not in a good place emotionally or mentally. Some of you guys could definitely be dealing with, with depression with this um, Queen of Cups in reverse. Wow. Cancer, Gemini, energy, or any water sign. Yeah. <clears throat> you're in this place emotionally because, because of your thoughts. Eight of Cups. So I feel like, so there's a give up energy here where you just think, you just feel like you're just going to walk away from it all. Um, so I get the sense that you feel like whatever, whatever you're trying to manifest, whether it's money or relationship, because I see both out here, to be honest with you. I feel like you're at the point where you feel like you're going to give up and walk away. But I'm here to tell you, Eight of Cups, Scorpio energy, I'm here to tell you, you're always manifesting. You can't get away from it because it's something that we naturally do. If you decide to not persist in your new story, your new affirmations, whatever you want to call it, if you decide not to do it, guess what you're going to keep experiencing? The exact same thing. Whatever your baseline is. It's like, let me, for people who trade, if, if you've ever traded stocks, cur or currencies, anything like that. When I was learning, I learned how to trade years and years and years ago. And when you look at charts, the historical data, okay, I relate the historical data to your long-term assumptions, the way that you were raised and what was instilled in you by your parents, your family, your environment that you were in. To me, that is historical data, okay? So let's just say that there's a stock, that their chart, the chart, the resistance on that stock is at $80 and the support is at $20 for this particular stock. Okay. That stock historically has bounced between that range that up and down, up and down. It has bounced between that range for years. Okay. The stock might drop as low as $20, but then it runs back up. And when it runs back up, it runs back up hard and heavy, but then it hits that resistance that $80 ceiling, and then it comes back down to its foundation, which is that $20. But it's stuck in that range. It's like a big cycle. That's what I feel like happens for a lot of people because they don't understand that they got to keep going, persisting past the resistance. Persisting, I'm sorry, you guys, I didn't mean to hit this. Persisting past the resistance, and eventually you will break through that resistance and then create a new a new um high okay for those of you guys I, I i hope that made sense it made sense in my mind when i was giving the analogy or when i saw it in my mind but i feel like people are stuck between this 
Like you can go only so high. This is your ceiling, but you never drop below your front, your support. And you have to keep persisting. You have to keep persisting because if you don't, that is the range that you will stay in. That is the box that you will stay in. You won't get any higher than that. You might not go any lower than that. Okay. You may not. And then some, some people do, do go blow past their support because it's so much easier to fall into it's so much easier to fall into um woe is me and victim it's easy to do that it's hard to keep going up against something when you're not seeing the results when you're not seeing anything happen it's it's harder to do that okay but the payoff is it's great if you can just get past it okay so i feel like a lot of you guys are feeling stuck in that range that loop of up and down and up and down and you're there because you will not persist in the new story and when i say story whatever affirmations you have because you won't persist in it even though you don't see anything because you won't persist in it even though you're crying because you won't persist in it even if, even though you're anxious because you will not persist in it um you're stuck in that loop and I feel like a lot of y'all are, are at the point where you want to give give up and walk away or you have, or you've already walked away. But I'm telling you that you can't walk away from this. You either deal with it or you deal with it now or you're going to be dealing with this for the rest of your life. Because that's why it always is is funny to me when I when people get in my comments and say, well, I'm just going to find somebody else. Why? All you're going to do is manifest the same situation all over again, because it's not the person. It's not the person. You know, you have, you could have dated 10 people. You're the common denominator. If 10 relationships went bad, you're the common denominator in all of that. Okay. And no matter what these people did, once again, everybody is you pushed out. So whatever your dominating assumptions are about love and relationship, those people had to play those assumptions out for you. They had to, they didn't have a choice. Why is it that that same person who treated you so horribly could, could can go on to meet the next person and treat them like a queen. Why is that? Why is that? King of Swords. More mental energy. More overthinking. Okay. And I feel like for some of you guys, if this is about a love manifestation, which I feel like this section is, um, you feel like walling up your emotion or getting rid of emotion is the way to go. But guess what you will attract at that point? <clears throat> if you feel like if your dominant assumption is that it's best to not have any emotion in when dealing with dating and relationships, if that's your dominant assumption, you will manifest people who are emotionally unavailable because that's your dominant assumption. And so people have to play that out. <clears throat> Let's get an ancient message. A lot of y'all are worried about time and how long it's going to take. But if you truly believed that things, that it was already here, that you already had it, because most people are affirming as if something has already happened, then time would not be a factor for you. Okay. And, and, and let me say this. I've had things manifest that I didn't truly believe. I, I didn't believe it. Okay. It's the fact that I just kept saying it no matter what, because I'm stubborn like that. Because I know that if I keep saying something um, or if I keep thinking something that it has to show up because I've done it for bad stuff repeatedly. So I know. OK. <clears throat> so, no, you don't have to be. You know, some people say, oh, you got to believe. No, you don't. I've had things pop up that I didn't believe. It was purely off of the fact that I kept I, I just kept dwelling on it. And this came out too with this, but I'm going to say something. This is not the right time. L look at this. Reconsider. It's up to you. So change your mind. It's all up to you. 
And this is not the time. You do not have time for the bull crap that you're thinking. You do not have time. This is not the time for that. This is not the time for it, okay? Because, like I said, for a lot of y'all, it's actually right there. It's right there. And if you just reach your hand out, if you just persist, you, you would have that manifestation. So, Gemini, <clears throat> I thank you for this reading. I hope it helped you. Please don't forget to like the video and subscribe to the channel. Click the notification bell so you'll know when a new video comes out. For all your coffee and glam needs, visit www.theglamcafe.com. If you like a personal reading, my information is in the description box. And I'll speak to you soon. Bye.